Borrego Springs sprawls across a mostly flat desert valley, about 80 miles east of San Diego. That remote location is both an attraction and a challenge. We are 50 miles from another community that has a big box store. We are 30 miles from the nearest gas station if our power goes out. That's Linda Haddock, who's lived here about 10 years. She says daytime temperatures can languish above the century mark for long periods during the summer. Haddock says that creates a voracious appetite for power, an appetite that has, at times, pushed her monthly power bill over $1,000. Our electric bills soar in the summertime. We live in the desert. Your temperatures, if it's going to be 120 outside, you know, it's going to be 160 in your car, the ground's 180. It's not going to cool down that much at night. Haddock lives in a gated resort community of manufactured homes. The electricity that feeds her appliances pulses through a single high voltage power line that comes from San Diego. That San Diego gas and electric line climbs over a treacherous mountain range. In September 2013, a storm took out 19 SDG&E power poles, severing the town's electrical umbilical cord. Lightning took them out. It wasn't anything anybody did. Lightning just took out the poles. That's when our monsoon season is. Stuff happens. And we were informed by SDG&E, by this outage, by this issue of trying to get to these poles, get us back up, that it was going to be three to four days. An outage that long puts lives here at risk. Utility officials scrambled to get the power back on. Their attention quickly turned to a large solar farm on the edge of town. Rows of photovoltaic panels sit on brackets several feet off the ground. The solar trees fill the corner of the sun-splashed valley. Neil Bartek's hard hat shields his head from the midday desert sun. This is a single-axis tracking solar field. And so the, the panels are actually tracking the movement of the sun. So right now, there, there's a motor that actually is, is turning all the panels to, to be optimally, optimally aligned with the sun. The panels can generate enough electricity to turn on the lights in 26,000 homes. Work crews rerouted that power in 2013 to keep local lights on in Borrego Springs while the power lines were repaired. That was essentially the birth of the region's microgrid. What the microgrid allows us to do is to have some resources sourced locally here so that if, if uh, damage occurs to that line, we can use these local resources to, to power the community and, and increase its reliability. But solar isn't the only key to developing a power island like this one. San Diego Gas and Electric added diesel generators to boost reliability and engineers installed a power storage facility. Inside these short white trailers, air conditioners are always on. They keep racks of lithium ion batteries cool. The utility's Hanan Eisenman says the batteries have a couple of jobs. So what we do with batteries is we store that renewable energy during the day when the sun's out, and then we can release it into the grid in the evening times. If a cloud moves over the solar farm during the day, the batteries make up for the dip in energy production. That keeps the flow of energy to either the town or the grid steady and predictable. So we wanted to create a project where we could see how all of those new uh, technologies coming onto the, the grid affect the grid and how we can leverage those new technologies to create opportunities for our customers to be more sustainable to be cleaner, and then also to provide greater reliability. Eisenman says getting all the power supplies to work together is the key to success. He can see a future where this kind of technology can be located in more crowded places, places where the power grid is already pretty resilient. Tomorrow, we'll look at a microgrid that's working in the city of San Diego, and we'll consider the future of this emerging technology. Eric Anderson, KPBS News.